Welcome to this C Sharp Bootcamp where you can learn C Sharp as an absolute beginner. On day one, we are going to create an application. You can input your first name and your last name, and then it will display a welcome message. You don't need any prior knowledge. As long as you have a computer, you will be able to follow this course and create this simple application on the first day. Okay, let's get started. In the first several days, we're going to use this website to learn about C Sharp. We don't need any tools. And eventually, we're going to move on to using Visual Studio. So open up your favorite browser and type in this URL, .netfiddle.net. First time you go to this website, you're going to see a page like this, where you have your options, settings on the left. In the middle here, you have your coding area, and then this is the output of your console application. On the left hand side, make sure your language is C sharp because we're learning C sharp. Uh, make sure the project type is console. This is the basic application we can create. So we're going to start with console application. And then compiler doesn't really matter, but make sure you select .NET, either this one or .NET 5. So basically, at this moment, keep everything as default you'll be fine. We selected console as the project type, but what is a console? So this area is our console. And then our program will output to the console, right? When the user interact with the console, the information will go from the console to our program. So this is console application where the console is basically the user interface, right? The interface between the user and the computer. Coding is all about giving instructions to the computer and let the computer follow our instructions and do what we want it to do. In this video, let's learn about output information to the console, right? So when you look at this coding area, at this moment, don't worry about what all of these are, right? Just go into this main area as a open curly brace and a closing curly brace, right? So we are going to work within these two curly braces, right? This is the area that we are going to focus on, right? We can enter all of the information in here, right? And then you can see that it says console dot right line, right? So console dot right line. So C Sharp is a object oriented language. And if you ask it to do something, it almost always starts with the object, right? And you don't need to worry about what an object is at this moment. You can basically consider that when you ask someone to do something, you have to use that, the name of that person, right? For example, if you ask a manager to, to complete a task, you basically say, hey, manager, you go complete the task right, do task. So this is the same thing here. This object here represents this console that we talked about, right? So we're basically saying, hey, console, you go ahead and write a line of information. And then we provide the information in this write line command. All right, so here we're saying, console, you write a line, and the information you want to display is, hello, world. Right. Since we have this already as an example, now as a practice, I ask you to display another message below this hello world. And basically here, I want you to say, my name is, and you say your name. Okay. And try to do that, right? Try to just follow this. And then in this area, you basically, you hit enter, and then you start copying this code. Not exactly copy and paste, but you start typing the same code, but this time instead of hello world, you say, my name is. In my case, I would say my name is Frank. So pause the video and go ahead and do that. Right. I hope you have done your work. And this is what I would do, right? So I have already typed console and then I'll type dot, right? And this thing that popped up is basically a list of all of the tasks that the console can do, right? It's basically, uh, if we use the manager metaphor, a manager can do a lot of tasks. 
this is basically a list of all the things the manager can do. Why well, in this case is all the things the council can do. Right? So you don't have to remember exactly how to write this uh, command here. Right? So we're just going to say write and then it will give us all of the tasks that the council can do that start with the word write. So in this case, we see write and write line, right? And then you can select write line, then it will automatically complete the command. And then it also tells you what you can display by using the write line command. But don't worry about that, just put your name. So I'm gonna say, my name is Frank, and then I notice that there is a semicolon here, so I'm gonna type a semicolon here. And then in order to run these instructions, these commands, I click on this run button up there. Uh-oh, something is wrong. It says compilation error. Sometimes the information in the error message isn't very uh, clear, but what we can do is we can see there's some squiggly red lines here. It basically highlighting that we are having some trouble here. And if we put our cursor, hover the cursor over it, you can see name mine does not exist in the current context. So if we look very closely, this has a quote, but we don't have a quote here, right? So that's the problem here. So basically C Sharp is thinking this is a command, right? This is a command. That's why it's complaining say, to say that my does not exist in the current context, right? My as a command doesn't exist. But we want to display my name is Frank, this information, right? So in that case, we need to surround this with double quotes. And we call this a string. A string has many characters connected together, right? It could have letters, spaces, or uh, maybe comma, periods, numbers, or anything you can type on the keyboard. When they're all connected together and surrounded by the quotes, we call it a string. And it's very similar to something like this prayer beads or necklace, where you have all of the beads connected together. When you're typing a string like this, it's almost like you're beading. You're putting a bead one after another. And then the quote at the beginning, it tells this is the beginning of the string, right? And this closing double quote is the end of the string. So we have to have double quotes surround uh, the information in the middle in order to make a string. And if you don't have it, then C Sharp is going to think that all of these are command. So if we surround it with the double quotes, you can see the squiggly line after a second will disappear. This means there's no problem anymore. And if we click on the run button, now we can see hello world, my name is Frank. If we have two strings, how do we connect them together? So let's say if I want to connect my first name with my last name as separate strings, right? So I have to have my last name here. So how do we connect the first name string uh, to the last name string? We just need a plus sign so we can connect them together. And let's actually delete the first line too. So I click on the run button. I can see Frank Liu, but only one problem here. There isn't a space here. So how do we add a space? We can add a space here, right? And click on the run button. Now I can see the space. Or I can add a space just before the last name. I can also have the same result. There's another option here. I can just add a space here, right? And then if I click on the rub button, I have the same result. What if I delete this space? Right, so basically I have an empty string here. Right? So in this case, if I click on the run button, I don't see the space in between. Right? So there are three ways to add a space here. And another thing is how do I display my first name and the last name on two different lines, right? So for example, uh, if I say this is my first name, right? Uh, and then I want to display my last name on the second line. What I can do is I can copy this first line and paste it in their knees. 
and then I can put my last name here. Right, so if I do this, I can see my first name, last name, so it's properly displayed. Right. Another way to do it is to put these two messages here, and then I can separate them with backslash n. So this backslash n, these two characters are considered as one character, and it's a special character. It's a command, actually. We're having a command within a string, and the reason why the computer knows this is a command is that the computer sees this backslash, which is a special character. It's telling the computer to do something. In this case, uh, it's backslash n, which represents new line, which tells the computer that we need to start a new line at the place of this special character. All right, so in this case, if I run this program again, again, well, I get the same result. Uh, what if I change first name to something like Tom, right, then you can see this. Okay, so this is a new line character. Whenever you see a backslash in a string, in a C-sharp language, you know this is a command, which we usually call it a escape character. An escape character gives the immediate following character a special meaning. So in this case, the computer is no longer considering the letter N as a regular letter. Uh, C-sharp language consider this two characters as one special command character, telling the computer to add a new line here, insert a new line here. Okay, another thing we want to learn about is what if I want to display first name, double quote, Tom, right? We want to surround Tom with double quotes, right? And surround my last name as double quote. Right. So can we do this? You see, as soon as I put double quotes on it, it has squiggly lines, right? So put my double double quotes at the last name. It also gives us the, the squiggly lines. And why is that? You see, this is the beginning. This double quote signifies the beginning of, right? And this signifies the end of the string. So then what is this, Tom? The computer doesn't know what it is. We have to tell the computer what it is, right? Because we have a string already, so then the computer considers this word as a command, which right, it doesn't exist as a command. So what we need is really to, to tell the uh, computer that this is no longer a command, right? So we can use this escape character to tell the computer that this no longer signifies the end of the string. So we can use this as well. And then we have to add this again, and that's again. So basically we're telling the computer that this is no longer a command, this is considered as a regular character, right? And in this case, uh, we're telling the computer that this is no longer a regular character, it's a special character. Uh, we use the backslash, right? The escape character to give a different meaning of the character after the backslash. So in this case, if we run the program, we can see that the double quotes are displaying correctly. Let's see whether you can use the knowledge that you have learned so far to display a diamond or a star on the console. Try to do that yourself and then come back and watch next video to see what I would do to display this diamond. Remember to really spend the time and do all of the exercises yourself. That's the only way you can hammer all of the concepts into your head and eventually become a professional developer. Right, there's many ways to do it. Let's start with cleaning up this coding area inside this main curly braces. Right, so let's start typing console. We ask the console to do something dot. Right, we're going to write line. What we want to display is uh, three lines of star, right? And of course, we need to type in double quotes, right? So this is a string. So everything inside this is a string. So if I put star here, right? And we see there's three lines, right? So if we just do simply like this, right? And then 
the third line, one star. If we do it this way and we run, click on the run button, what do we see here? We don't see a diamond, we see kind of this triangle here. So how do we move this star to the middle in order to align with the middle star here? Well, the simplest way is to add a space here. And of course, we're gonna add another space here. And this will actually look like a diamond on the program, right? On our instructions here. Now, if we click on the run button, we actually see the diamond just like that. Okay, so in order to practice what we have learned, we wanna try different ways to do this, right? Another way we can do it is, uh, we can just write everything in one line. First, we have one character, and then we have a space, then we write three characters. And then we have another space, write another character, right? If we do this, everything will be on one line. So all we need to do is to break this one line into three lines, right? So, which means we need to put a new line right over here and another new line right over here, or actually right over here, right? So let's do that. So we're doing a backslash N, which signifies a new line here, right? And then another one signifies a new line. And we click on the run button. We can see a star. So that's the second way to do it. And perhaps this doesn't look very clean, so that's when we use the knowledge of the string concatenation to concatenate, to connect three different strings together, right, in order to see this as, as cleaner as possible. So what we can do is uh, we can have one string, just like that, right, and then we use plus sign to connect uh, the first string with the second string which is three stars, right? And then we connect the three stars with another one star, right? If we do this, then we can see that everything is on one line, plus uh, we don't have the proper space. We are going to concatenate the special character, right? To tell it to break right here, right? And, and the same thing here, we're gonna use backslash and, and then another plus sign to connect everything together. And now we wait till the squiggly line disappear. Uh, sometimes I think this .NET Fiddle doesn't work very well. I think uh, this is okay, but it doesn't disappear, but that's fine. Click on the run button. Now we can see that we have the diamond displayed, right? Right, because we have a space here, which give us space right over here. And then we break, right, so it becomes a new line here. Then we have three stars, then we break again, and then we have a space and star. So we have this displayed again. So these are the three methods, right? Incorporated all of the knowledge that we have learned so far about string concatenation, about uh, breaking new lines with two different methods, and I hope you have enjoyed doing this exercise. Instead of manually concatenation, eventually we're gonna upgrade this exercise. We're gonna display a very awesome uh, big diamond. Just with the program automatically display all of the stars instead of repeatedly enter the stars. But that's for later. So far, we have learned how to output information from our program to this console area. In this video, we're gonna learn how to retrieve information from the console to our program. So just like what we have done to output information, we said console.write, right? We asked the console to do something. In order to get information from the console, we also need to do similar thing. We're gonna say console, you go ahead and read a line, right? Because before we said you go ahead and write a line, so now it's the opposite. You please go ahead and read a line. So once this console object execute this read line command, it's going to take the information from the console, which is the user input, and replace this line of the command with that information. So for example, if I say console.write, I write a message there, and I put a string with double quotes, right? And I'm saying, please enter your first name. And then a colon and with a semicolon. So for C-sharp, 
you always end a command, like a line of command with semicolon, right? And then here, if we say console.readLine, this will trigger the window to ask for information from the user. Once the information is entered, then this information will go to the program and replace this line. Okay, let's click on the run button and see how this play out. Okay, it says, please enter your first name. Okay, so I use my mouse, click into the console, and I say, Frank, which is my name. And then I have to hit enter to finish the line. So once I hit that enter, then this Frank name will be read, right? And it will replace this, but we can't see any result, right? So in order to see the result, we have to output this information, right? So basically in this case, this Frank will actually replace this line. So how do we see my name is Frank? I have to output this information. And how do we output information? We use console.writeAlign, right? Use console.writeLine. So we're going to say console.writeLine. And what is the line we're going to write? We are going to write this. It's kind of tricky, but you have to understand here is that once the information is received from user, this line is replaced by that information. That's why we can write out that information. We can output the information directly. And by the way, a line of command always ends with semicolon. Remember, I just deleted this one. Yeah, it should only ends with semicolon. It shouldn't have another one in between, right? So that's why I deleted the semicolon. Just wanted to add this, right? So this program execute, then it will output this information, and then the user will enter the user's name. And then this command will be replaced by that name. And because we have this red line here, that name is going to be output to the console again. So what we're going to do in order to make it more clear, I will say your name is, and then a colon with a space, right? And then we'll have a string concatenation to connect these two strings together, just like this. And then we'll see what happens if we click on run. Okay. So it says, please enter your name. So I enter my name, Frank. I hit enter and this Frank information will replace console.readLine and then it will be concatenated with this, right? So the output is going to be your name is colon space Frank in this case. Okay. Let's see what happens. I'm going to hit enter right now. You see, it says your name is colon space Frank. So this is how we read a line from the console. Later, we'll learn some more exciting stuff like reading information from a graphical user interface, like a Windows application, a mobile application, or a web application. But for now, we're starting with the simplest application, which is the console application. In this video, we're going to learn variables in C Sharp. In the previous video, we have these two strings connected together. What if we want to process this user input before we do the concatenation, right? Of course, we can do some processing right here, but it's rather inconvenient, right? And if we want to do a lot of processing, this one line of code is going to become longer and longer, and it's hard to read. And that's when we need a variable to temporarily store the user input value. Let's actually go ahead and create a variable, and then I'll go ahead and explain to you what a variable is. Right. So to declare a variable, for now, the easiest way is to use the var keyword, right? It stands for variable. Uh, because here we're saying, please enter your first name. So we, we're going to call this variable first name, right? So first name equals console.readLine. So now what happens is that once the user enters the information here, it's going to replace this line, right? This command line. And then we say it's first name equals to this. And this equal sign, it means that we're assigning this value to this variable. Or to put it more clearly, we're giving this value to this variable. 
right? And this variable is basically a space in the computer. So it's somewhere in the computer's memory that we created just to store the information, right? So basically this information will go to, will go to this and replace this command line, right? And then it will be stored inside the space. So in this case, right, the name Frank will be stored inside the space. And then we're giving this space a name and that name is first name. So after this, so whenever we use this first name, we are going to be able to get the value from that space, right? So in this case, Frank will be stored inside the space. And then if we want to output the information, we can just say console.writeLine, right? And then we're gonna write the name of this variable here. Remember in C Sharp, everything is case sensitive, meaning that if you put capitalized N here, you have to use capitalized N here as well. Otherwise it won't recognize it, right? See here is complaints. The name first name does not exist in the current context, right? So if we wanna fix that, we change to capitalize N, then it stopped complaining, right? So in this case, we're going to add, again, we're gonna say your, your first name is colon, and then we concatenate with the first name variable here. And then we'll run it. We're gonna say Frank again. It did the same thing as we did before, right? Only that this time we're using variable instead of directly using this. So to draw it again, to make it more clear for you, first information is going to replace this line, right? And then this is going to be stored in that space, in the memory, right? And this space is called first name. And then here in this line, we, we wanted to output the first name, right? So when the computer is executing and sees this first name variable here, it's going to go into the space and retrieve the value, and then it will replace this variable, right? So the end result is your first name is colon and Frank. Where does the Frank come from? It come from here. Just want to quickly talk about the naming of variables, right? Just usually we'll want to make the name meaningful. Of course, you can just put A, right? But then when other people read the code or when you read the code uh, several months later, you probably don't know what this A means. In this program with only three lines, it's clear what A means but eventually you're gonna write 300 lines, 1,000 lines, 2,000 lines of code. It may not be within one file, but with that amount of code, with a variable A, you're gonna get very confused. So the first rule uh, of naming is to make it meaningful, right? So in this case, we use first name, which makes it very, very clear that the variable actually stores the first name right, instead of the last name. Another thing is that in C Sharp, a variable name can only contain letters, numbers, or underscores. And plus, it cannot start with numbers, right? You can end it with number. Right? I put number one here, number one there. It will still work. You can start with underscore, right? It will still work, right? But the moment you, you start with, with a uh, number, it will not work. See this, it started complaining again, right? Remember, it can contain letters, numbers, or underscores, but it cannot start with a number. Now that we have a variable here, you can tell the variable to do something. It's just like we're telling the console to write line or read a line, right? We can tell the variable to do something. So for example, if we, instead of we, displaying your name is Frank. We want to display, uh, we want to append the length of the name, right? So for example, my name has five characters, five letters, right? So we're gonna say Frank, and then we're gonna say parenthesis, five parenthesis, right? So how do we do that? Uh, we can append, of 
course, right? Connect, concatenate. And then here, we're going to say opening parenthesis and then the length of my first name. So do, how do we do that? It's just like we're telling the console to do something. We can also tell the variable to do something. We say variable dot, and then you can see a list of all of the things that this variable can do. Right? Not every type of variable will have the same list of things, but in this case, this variable represents a string. So it can do all of the things that a string can do. So in this case, we want to find the length of the variable. We start typing len, and we can see that the length is automatically displayed in the IntelliSense window. And we just basically type on Enter, or you can hit the Tab key. Then we will concatenate with a closing parenthesis, and that's it. So in this case, we run it again. And so if I put my name again here, it says your name, your first name is Frank with the parenthesis five parenthesis. So this is the length of my name. So this example shows that a variable can help us to do some processing before we display it to the console. Now we're getting closer to the end of the day. This is the time we want to practice what we have learned. So in this exercise, I want you to program a console application that will ask for your first name, and then it will ask for the last name, and then we'll display a welcome message. So please go ahead and program this application, and it has to do exactly this. First, the application will need to display a message that says, what is your first name? And then the user would enter first name. You enter your first name. In my case, I enter Frank, and then immediately after that, it should display another question. What is your last name? So then, then you enter your last name. In my case, I enter Liu as my last name. And then immediately after that, it should display a welcome message. It says, welcome Frank Liu, right? In your case, it's going to welcome your name or whoever's name with a explanation mark. So that's the exercise for this day. Go ahead and do that, and then come back and see how I implement this small console application. OK, let's implement this solution. Right? First of all, the application should ask, what is your first name? Right? So we'll do console.writeLine. Right? We'll say, hey, console, go ahead and write a line. What is your first name? And don't forget to use your quotes to surround the string. Otherwise, all of these will be considered as command, which do not exist, and it will complain. And also remember to close this with semicolon. Right. And then uh, this is the time we need to receive information from the console. Right. So we need to read a line. Right. So where do we store this information? We can store this information in a variable, and we'll name this variable after the first name, right? Because this is meaningful. We know that this variable stores first name by giving this variable this first name as a name. And then to save some time, we can copy these two lines and paste it over here, right? And then here, the second question is, what is your last name, right? Now you can see it complains that a local variable or function named first name is already defined, right? So basically there is this first name and another first name. So it's complaining, right? It's saying that you already have a first name. Why do you have it again? It's not allowed, right? Of course, we're going to change it to last name, right? So here we're going to read from the console and then we store that last name in this variable. And finally, we'll ask the console to display this final message. And that message is going to be welcome, and then first name. Don't forget to add a space here, and then concatenate with first name. Okay. Concatenate a space, and then finally, the last name. Well, not finally. We'll have to end it with explanation mark. Right, let's click on the run button and see whether this implements what we wanted. Okay, so we ask for what is your first name? 
right? Apparently there's a problem here because my requirement says, what is your first name? Question mark, right? So we immediately see that we're missing the question mark. That's okay. We're going to add this question mark here. I'm going to add this question mark here. And then we'll click on the run button again. Okay. What is your first name? So this is a question. So enter my first name. And then it says, what is your last name? So I enter my, <laughs> my last name. And uh, now I see this welcome message. This is exactly what our application's requirement is. Welcome, Frank Liu. Hopefully you have done this exercise yourself and you find this application interesting and not too difficult. In this video, we are going to learn comments. So in this coding area, we can see there's several lines already. And it's not so clear what they actually do by just looking at it. Right? And you have to actually read, read it line by line before you can understand what it actually does. So a way to make this clear to programmers, even to yourself, is to use comments. And the way to do that in C Sharp is we can do slash, slash, double slash. And then you can see the color becomes green, right? And this means it's a comment, right? So in here, we can say ask for first name. So this tells us that the, the lines, the line or the lines after this comment, uh, ask for the first name, right? And then here we can say, uh, ask for last name, right? Of course here, by looking at this, we know that the lines after this is, uh, or are for the purpose of asking for the last name, right? And then here we can say, output the final re result, right? So in this way, we can clearly tell ourselves or other developers the purpose of the application and what are the steps uh, that implement this application. So this is very good for maintaining the application, right? So if you leave the job and some other developers come, right, then they read your code, uh, they know exactly what you're doing here before they actually read the code. Uh, it's also good for yourself because Maybe a few days later, when you read the code that you wrote a few days ago, you don't remember what they actually do, right? So by having all of these comments is going to help you. But there's a problem. What if you tomorrow you're going to change these two lines and ask for something else, for example, but then you forgot to change the comment. So that's going to be misleading, right? The comments will be misleading. So Remember when you update your code, go back to update your comments as well. In this video, we're going to cover some common mistakes that you may encounter when you just started coding in C Sharp. The first thing is that notice that there is a using system. If you don't have this, your program is not going to work, right? Because this console comes from the system. So for example, we come back to use that uh, manager metaphor. Right? So we, we tell manager to do something, we say manager dot, right? But which manager, right? Your company may have different departments and each department may have its own manager. So we have to say, for example, uh, marketing manager, right? So we have to say marketing dot manager dot do task, do task, right? Something like that. So in our case, this console, where does it come from? Which department, uh, quote unquote, which department does this console come from, right? It comes from system. So without this using, you see it started complaining. It says the console does not exist in the current context. Yeah, we can do, we can solve the problem by typing system.console. So, right? so system actually has this console. The console comes from the system. But we have so many consoles. We, every time we use console, we have to type system dot. So that's a lot of typing. So the way to simplify that is to import that system. We call it namespace and import the system namespace. Uh, at the beginning of the file, we say using, right? And here we can say using system and end it with semicolon. 
just like everywhere else. Okay, so this is the first common mistake a beginner C sharp developer may encounter. All right, secondly, we have to remember in C sharp, everything, literally everything is case sensitive. That means that if it's supposed to be console with a capital C, and if you don't do capital C, if you do lower C, that's totally different from console with a capital C. And if, for example, here you have a capital S, uh, it's not going to work either, right? So you have to have lowercase s. When you write an object name or a command name, you not only have to spell it correctly, you have to make sure the case is correct as well. Whether it's uppercase or lowercase, you have to make sure everything is correct. You think it's going to be hard to remember where is the uppercase, where is the lowercase. Uh, you know, luckily, we have IntelliSense. So as we're typing console, if we want to do something, you can all of these commands actually, uh, there could be long commands, right? And all of these uh, have IntelliSense. So we can just start typing, for example, set, and then we can see all of these, right? And then we can select the one that we want and hit the tab key and it automatically completes the command that we want to enter, right? That's the second problem we may encounter. The third one is uh, when we want to tell some something to do some job, we have to use this dot, right? So console dot or, you know, first name dot, right? And another thing we also uh, uh, encounter quite often is to end each line of command with a semicolon, right? We want to line end it with a semicolon. So the semicolon basically tells this is a command. And, and this may not has to be the end of this line, but it's the uh, end of the command. What that means is that if you want to write uh, something like, hi there, for example, Right, so this application will do that. Hi there, what is your first name? Right, so you can actually put these two commands in one line. And in this case, if I hit run button, it still works, right? I can put my first name here and then it will ask the next question. So this semicolon basically tells the computer that this is a command and this is another command. Right? And if you have a third command, you can also write it in one line, but it's clear to write it in separate lines. I'm just trying to emphasize that the semicolon tells us that this is the completion of a command. And those are the common errors that a beginner c -sharp developer may encounter. I hope by clarifying all of these, it will help you to start coding in c -sharp.